Welcome back to John's Films. Today we're going to talk about why you should not buy a MacBook Pro for video editing. This is the second video in our Laptop for Creators series. The first one talked about what you should look for in a laptop as a creator. Today we're going to talk about the scoring and then jump into why MacBooks really aren't set up for creators. Now, on the scoring, it's going to be a John scale. Why? Well, for one, you can't argue much with the John scale. But two, it lets you see my individual perspective and gives me an opportunity to talk about each of the components. We'll start on the left, and that's going to be the rating. The higher the John's Films logo, the higher the score. Top of the line is up at the top, fair to Midland, in the middle, and for real, at the bottom. For those of you not from Texas, USA, fair to Midland means, meh, it's good, meh. So let's take the categories that I'm going to pay attention to. You've got screen resolution, the processor, the graphics processor, usability. This will encompass the design, the true usability, and the battery life, and the price. With that out of the way, let's jump into the MacBook Pro 13-inch base configuration. Ha! Got you already, John. You're an idiot. Nobody would buy the base configuration for video editing. <laughs> well, you'd be surprised. I do a lot of benchmarks on the channel, and because of that, I get a lot of questions. John, should I buy this? And one of the most frequently asked questions, should I buy a MacBook Pro for video editing? Invariably, when we get to brass tacks, this is the configuration they're talking about. So what's in it? Well, you're looking at a 2560 by 1600 screen. This is one of my core criterias for a video editing laptop, and I love the screen that's on this MacBook. Really, it's true to color, it's pretty, it's bright and vibrant, it is gorgeous. It is a good display, especially for the base configuration. On the processor side, though, the base configuration is a two-generation-old Intel Core i5 processor, runs at 1.4 gigahertz. Boost higher than that, but this is the base configuration. That is a very low-end processor. It's intended to preserve battery and enable web browsing, as are the 8 gigabytes of 2133 MHz DDR4 RAM. On the GPU front, we really don't have one. What we've got is an integrated graphics processor, which is actually in your central processing unit, your CPU. This is meant, again, for web browsing, for PowerPoint, and for basic graphics operations. It's not going to be able to enable at high frame rates any types of games if you're saying, oh, I'm gonna game, nor are you going to be able to drive any amount of video editing through this IGP. On the usability front, I gotta admit, these things are beautiful. They're carved out of one solid block of aluminum, the case is. The keyboard is a new key keyboard um, and is apparently quite nice, the travel and the click and the feel. The trackpad, on MacBooks is made out of glass and it is second to none. It is the best trackpad of any laptop anywhere. Usability wise, this is a winner. But where we take a true dive is in the price. It's $1,299, $1,299 for what is bare bones five six hundred dollar hardware. I admit the screen is nicer than all of the laptops you're going to get in that category, but the rest of the hardware is exactly what you're going to get for a $600 laptop. While it will probably run Premiere Pro, boot it up and at least let you cut video, it's going to be extremely painful and the render times are going to be atrocious. In DaVinci Resolve, it's not going to boot. So good effort, not going to happen. Now this is the base configuration, so let's take a step up. Let's see what we can max this thing out at and see how good we can make it. In this case, we've still got the 2560 by 1600 screen, which makes me moderately happy. The processor stepped it up while still a four core processor. It's a current generation, 10th generation Intel i7 processor with a base clock config of 2.3 gigahertz. Four cores is still not getting you very far. It's got 32 gigabytes of 3733 megahertz RAM, which is a massive improvement over the eight gigabytes of 2133. This is a giant leap forward and is something that'll actually help us. The GPU is still integrated into the processor, but as we're two generations further, we now have the Intel Iris Plus integrated graphics unit, which will run Premiere Pro. Um, I'm not gonna call it handily, but it'll run it. You can cut, you can add effects. The real challenge with it, DaVinci Resolve, is gonna run uh, very poorly if it runs at all. I 
haven't tested it, but it's going to be tough. Resolve really expects a dedicated GPU. Storage-wise, I only went for the 2 terabyte SSD because that was a $250 upgrade or so, whereas the 4 terabyte SSD was $1,000, and I just couldn't justify it even on the high-end unit. The usability is much the same, though, when you're talking about editing video. This one will be a bit better. The screen is a good size. The uh, form factor is fantastic. It's got the same absolute dream touchpad. Keyboard is the new keyboard, which people tend to like. And like the other one, this does have the touch screen, uh, which is embedded right above the keyboard to enable hotkeys that are context aware of what applications you have open. Price-wise, this comes at an eye-watering $3,000. There is no excuse for this. There is no reason you should buy this. The price knocks it out of usefulness. You can get so much more hardware for this price. It's insane. I'll be highlighting those in future videos. Now, stepping up to their 16-inch MacBook. Immediately, you'll notice this is a different class of computer. It has a 3072 by 1920 resolution screen. That is a fantastic resolution for us to work with. Not quite 4K, but it is a good resolution to work with, and the screen is brightness-wise, color accuracy-wise, it's a beautiful screen, just like on the 13-inch. The processor that we're working with is now a ninth generation Core i7. It's 2.6 gigahertz. It's up to six cores, which is a big difference when you're talking about rendering times, and so you'll notice it's up to fair to midland. When you're looking at the graphics processing unit, this is the cheaper version of the 16, and it's got 4 gigabytes of GDDR6 in a Radeon Pro 5300M. This is not going to exactly knock your socks off. It will, however, run Premiere Pro pretty decently, and it will run DaVinci Resolve, even probably cutting 4K and some basic effects. But if you're doing any heavy color grading or anything else in Resolve, you're going to wish you had something else. When we look at the usability of it, it's, again, a beautiful form factor, a great screen, top-of-the-class touchpad, nice keyboard. It's got that accessibility LED bar right above the keys, which is context-sensitive. And generally speaking, it's acceptable for its work. It has a 512-gigabyte SSD, which is going to be painful when it comes to video editing at some point because you got to load your OS, your programs on it, and then your footage. You're likely to be using the Thunderbolt drives that are involved and included so that you can edit off of an external drive, which answers the usability of Fair to Midland. Finally, the price. $2,400 for last-generation 6-core processor, 16 gigabytes of what is now relatively slow memory, a lower-end graphics card, and small storage. Still not a good value. So we move over to our high-end MacBook Pro 16. And this thing, this thing means business. It has the same 3072 by 1920 screen resolution. It's the same screen with the same brightness, the same color accuracy, and it's fantastic. Really a good screen. Processors up to a ninth generation, that is one generation old Intel i7, with a boost to 4.5 gigahertz. It's an eight core processor, which in both programs will improve your renders if you're not using hardware acceleration, which while it is available in Premiere Pro, is not available to users of DaVinci Resolve Free you would need to have the DaVinci Resolve Studio Edition for that. You're looking at your memory, it's still 2666 megahertz RAM, but I've upped it to 64 gigabytes, which really for the processor that's here and the graphics card, this is likely overkill. I don't know that you'd be able to leverage that with textures and everything you'd want to use to have the compute power that you've got. Depends really specifically on your use case, 32 gigabytes would probably be a better choice. The graphics card is an AMD Radeon Pro 5600M with 8 gigabytes of HBM2 memory. Now, that's a faster memory. It's a faster processor. This is the top-of-the-line graphics processing unit available in a laptop from Apple right now. And frankly, it does a decent job. You can run DaVinci Resolve. You can run Premiere Pro pretty happily. Uh, if you check out Max Tech or Max Yuryev here on YouTube, you'll see plenty of benchmarks of this versus the 5300 that we just reviewed and see whether or not the upgrade is worth it to you. Unfortunately, it is extremely expensive for that upgrade. And finally, I put in a 2 terabyte SSD. Again, the 4 terabyte is a $1,000 upgrade, and I just couldn't even stomach it when configuring the highest possible workstation. 
That brings us to price. And you may hear the depression as it slips into my voice because this is $4,499 US dollars. We can get so much more. It's not going to be sleek and shiny. It's not going to look as awesome at the laptop bar at the coffee shop. To be fair, it will retain its value better than any other $4,500 laptop I were to show you, but it still isn't going to be fantastic at that either. And that sums it up. That is why you should not buy a MacBook for DaVinci Resolve, Premiere Pro, or any other video editing unless you are a Final Cut user. That is the one reason you should use to buy a MacBook Pro for video editing. Final Cut is a Mac-only software. It is a viable option for users that prefer it, and this would be the hardware of choice. Just get out your pocketbook and get ready to get comfortable with it being a bit lighter. Thanks for watching. If this has been helpful, feel free to subscribe. We've got more coming, and I'm going to give you the alternatives that are well worth your money compared to to this MacBook Pro lineup. If you didn't think I was entirely off my rocker, do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button below. It helps other people find this video. Thank you for watching and have a great day.